Hey guys, it's Bonnie back from Dwelling Vlogs. I have a few homeschool setup, I'm gonna say essentials to show you guys because I feel like when you start homeschooling, it's not the time to go and buy every single thing someone recommends. You have to kind of go with the flow, you know, maybe try, if, if, if you need something, maybe try that, see how it goes. Otherwise, you can spend buckets of money copycatting someone else when it's not actually something that you will use. There's people out there who've homeschooled for years who use stuff that I just don't. So I'm gonna recommend to you what I use and show you the things that have really held true to be useful to me, who that have been worthwhile purchases for me. And uh, then you guys can kind of make your own decisions. So in my world, in my home, these are my homeschool essential items and I wanna share them with you. Okay, so first let's get into the everyday zone. One thing that is a homeschool essential is something to keep your school on. And I have these carts. I will show you guys the carts in a second, but this right here, this has been the most tried and true homeschool essential in my house. It's a caddy. It's like one of those cutlery caddies with six pockets in it. I actually have one for myself that I don't share with the kids. This is mine, it's for my own painting and journaling and doodling and everything like that. It's really messy, but it's the same thing. It's got six pockets. I never use the handle, but it does have a cute little handle. Um, anyway, so in here, this comes out every single day. When the workbook comes out, I throw it on the table or if we're working in the living room, I'll throw this on the coffee table. I have my kids' paint brushes inside, which I, I, I'm gonna pause for a second here. I do recommend if you guys are a painting family, if you like to do nature journaling or if you want to do any kind of art that, that is painting, please don't buy your kids these. Please don't. I know they're at the dollar store, you can get like a hundred for a dollar, but they don't spread the paint. And I find that when these are out and my kids make something, they look at it and they're they're not pleased. I spent a couple dollars more. These are from Walmart, they're kids' paintbrushes. They're awesome. They have these really nice um, grippy handles. I will, some, when I'm painting and I have like my nice, like whatever, hair brushes and stuff, sometimes I'll grab my kids' paint brushes because I love these. They came in a set, I have two sets kind of mixed up here, but they came in a set with, um, you know, different brush heads on them and stuff like that. I got them at Walmart. You can probably find them on Amazon. Or maybe they say on them, Horizon Grip USA. And these were just, a little bit more money they were not expensive um, but just stay away from those if you have any intention to make art with your children that they want to that they will be proud of the other thing we use a lot is pencil crayons uh, I did a lot of markers when my kids were little because my kids seem to like markers better we've kind of left the marker trend and we're now into more pencil crayons but when my kids were little they didn't love pencil crayons so that's something to um, consider if you're doing wash or if you're if you're doing markers, washable markers are the way to go. I do love um, my mom got us these Crayola um, pencil crayons. We've been using them for a couple years, and they're pencil crayons with erasers. And so I love these because um, my kids, if they can't find a pencil for their math, they're allowed to use these. Do you ever have kids that will grab a pencil crayon when they go to do math, and you're like, no, 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 grab a pencil with an eraser because you're going to need to erase them. So this way they get to use fun colors with an eraser. Downside to these is that a regular pencil crayon, for Crayola anyways, it's pretty easy to color with. I do find these are a little more waxy and you have to push a little bit harder to get good color. They don't seem to bug my kids, but for me, I prefer a traditional pencil crayon when I'm coloring. Um, anyway, so that is kind of, I don't know, we got glue sticks, we got rulers. This is like, uh, I don't, we, we're not gonna go through school supplies. I just wanna tell you like the stuff that makes my homeschool function better. So. This caddy though, this caddy, some paint brushes that are half decent. Okay, so here are my semi-chaotic carts. I didn't organize them for you guys. I have some math manipulatives and stuff down in here. My plan is to organize this for just a math cart and then all our other extras and stuff can be here. But a lot of our printables, things that I want out to remind myself of. We always have our microscope out handy because everything is fun to throw under that thing. Um, anyway, so they're really handy. I like to have two because I have enough stuff to do to t for two. I tuck them in against the wall side by side like this. So they kind of look semi-organized together. Um, yeah, two has worked really good for our family. We're a family with three kids, so 
I also wanted to mention our little um, pencil sharpener friend, friend, an electric pencil sharpener. This is a game changer. My kids have more pencils and they will color more when their pencils are sharp. And so I don't recommend this brand. It's a boss stitch. It, we've struggled with uh, the, the quality very much um, for this model. So I'm not going to re recommend this brand, but I do recommend having a electric, an, ele an electric pencil sharpener because it makes a huge difference. The kids love it. They think it's fun and they will use their pencils and pencil crayons more. Um, we can't wait for this thing to die so we can buy a better one. Next up, let's talk stationery for your printer. Um, I'll show you my printer as well in a second, but here I want to talk about the three kinds of paper that I always have stocked in my house because I find them very useful. We do print our own curriculum. We do a digital from gather round, but um, I also find that even outside of my curriculum, there's always those really beautiful homeschool printables that people are making. I make some of them too, so we do a lot of printing for that. Um, so for me, a color printer has been a game changer. Ever since I started homeschooling, I wanted a, a color printer, and when we finally bought one a little over a year ago, I've been using it absolutely nonstop. Um, so I will show you that in a second, but for, for paper, um, we have our regular like 24 pound, is it, I think it's 24 pound, just like your regular printer paper, sorry, 20 pound. Regular printer paper, always got to have that on hand because you don't want to be spending money on paper, expensive paper, when it's just stuff you're just going to like print out quickly and throw away and you're not going to use paint on it or anything. So I do believe that you need to be stocked with something that's a little more affordable for the everyday printing stuff. And then I stock up on, when it's on sale, I get 32 pound paper. Um, this stuff works in my, um, in my printer. It's just regular standard size, but the 32 pound, um, I find, I really, really love how it feels for our school books and stuff like that. If it's not on sale, I will buy 28 pound. The reason why I won't go lower than that for our school books is because when my kids want to use markers, Anything under 28 pound, I always find it bleeds through to the next page, and I always print double sided. So if you're a double sided printing person, I always recommend 28 pound or better. I go 32 pound if it's on sale because it's my favorite paper to have. The other paper that I started recently to stock up, and I love it, and we use it so much, is I actually, let me see what kind of pound it is. It's an 80 pound, I'm going to show you guys. That's the paper that we're that we're loving right now. Okay, it's an 80 pound card stock, and it's barely a card stock. Some people will be like, oh, this is kind of too flimsy for a card stock, but it's, it's got enough of, of firmness to, to be used for even cards and stuff like that. But what I like about this is it's just got enough of, of, of texture to it that if I wanna print off something that my kids wanna paint, um, the paint will absorb into it. Sometimes you'll get card stock that's really shiny, and I find that quite annoying because when you start to paint it, the paint will start to drip down and things like that. So if you're doing cardstock, I recommend getting something that's just a little bit rough, um, not too shiny and smooth because if you decide you want to paint on it, smooth is bad. So anything rough is good. Um, I like these for any kind of um, you know flashcards that you're making or anything stiff that you want to make. I only buy one package of this stuff at a time because I don't use it as often. It's more expensive, so I kind of use it sparingly. Um, but I buy the regular printer paper, paper in my 32 or 28 pound, I buy that by the case. So that's the stuff that I have on hand. Let me show you my printer. Okay, so this is our printer. We got a refurbished Brother from Brother, the actual Brother website. Um, so it's really good. It's a Brother 3770. It's laser. It's color. You can do Wi-Fi wi -fi from your phone so I can ask it to print from anywhere in my house. Um, yeah, it does a super, super good job. It's also a scanner copier. Um, we were really happy with it. Um, they can get a little pricey, but we got it refurbished, so we got a little bit of a discount on that. And then we actually get our cartridges from Smart Ink because Brother cartridges are quite expensive. And so Smart Ink has some really good deals, and I have loved the print quality from them. So Smart Ink is where we get our affordable cartridges for our wonderful Brother printer, which has had... Just really, really good use. Now, for binding. I actually, we're not a family that has gone and purchased a binding machine. I always look at people who spiral bind their, bind their books, and I love it. Or, um, oh, there's so many different binding options. I could go into, like, you know, the Happy Planner binding with, like, the little discs, disc binding, I think it's called. They look so great. I have not invested in it. We've just been super satisfied with a three-hole punch and a binder. 
um i bought a whole bunch of little ah one inch binders and or even maybe they were even half inch and we just use those. we use them until our project or whatever we've printed off is done and then we take all the paper out, we recycle it, and we fill the binder up with the next thing. so a three hole punch in my world is essential because we use binders instead of a binding machine, it's more affordable and we're super happy even if it's a little less cute we love it [laughs] now the other thing that i have here and this is only applicable for families who it's like super dusty i have never dusted this apparently [laughs] it does sit around, out, because i do use it um anyway, so this is a laminator, it is the cheapest laminator i could find at walmart, it's a scotch brand lamin- laminator there's nothing special about it but there's also nothing about it that's not functional and it works just perfectly for our house and so i bought this laminator and then i i did initially buy scotch brand um pouches to go over my papers but they were a little more expensive than what i found online so this is the box of laminator pouches that i bought, i bought it off of amazon and you get a whole bunch so i buy these to cover my sheets in, i've only ever bought one box of these ever and i'm still, i've still have tons here and i do a lot of laminating so that has lasted me a long time. if you are a family who really doesn't buy printables online and digital files a laminator is probably something you can just not do um especially if you are a family who does have card stock on hand, some families they'll print on card stock and then they don't laminate laminating for me is for anything that i print out for my oldest that i'm like this is gonna have to last til my youngest uses it if it's flash cards that we're gonna use one time ever i will not laminate, i'll just print them on my card stock and be done um but if it's something that i'm like we're gonna put this away and then we're gonna have to bring it back out and hope that all the corners are good and that they're not ripped then i will laminate so this is super handy if you like printables, if you buy digital files of things then i would highly recommend a laminator but if you're not a family who ever buys those things it probably won't get used in your house so that's my thoughts on my laminator okay, and then the crate, there are so many videos online about the crate system this is actually something i used for a long time until i got some file cabinets downstairs so i have actually emptied my crate into my file cabinet that i now use but basically the milk crate system um you can get these milk crates, they even can stack together so i have a whole different milk crate that's for our farm business, so this is my farm milk crate [laughs] which also has to go into the filing cabinet and here's the one that i was using for school so basically i organize it with hanging folders, legal size, and my milk crates can go either you can do letter size this way or legal size this way so i'll have hanging folders with different um labels on them and then i'll have um different files inside those hanging folders kind of organizing everything and what i use this for is i usually uh prefer unbound books like math books and grammar books um back when we were doing abeka and i would have them unbound in here and i would just remove sheets for my kids for the day or for the week depending on what i wanted to organize when their worksheets were done i would also file them in here until the end of the year when we went through and recycled everything um so they're just a it's a really handy to keep handy way to keep organized something that i use a lot for printables are clipboards so when i want to have them out and ready to use if there is something that i'm like oh when it's a sunny day we gotta do that printable activity i'll have them ready on clipboards on my rolling carts but then when they're done i don't i've print i've spent the money on the paper and the color i don't just wanna throw them away things like this will go back in my filing system uh to to be saved for maybe possibly another use so those kind of work together so a milk crate or a filing system is really handy again if you're doing any kind of printables remember when you're getting those big mega bundles you don't have to print everything out i tend to prefer to print everything that i think and i can visualize us using right away so i don't forget about them in my digital files so in that case the clipboards are really handy and the milk crate system or filing system is also really handy to store those and yes, i do recommend doing clipboards i got like a package, a bulk package of ten clipboards we use them all the time not only for printables but like i said for my kids' math sheets and stuff like that i don't often hand them a whole workbook i'll just hold hand them their pages for the day 
So we use clipboards an awful lot and I highly recommend if that's something that appeals to you that you get a bulk package. <laughs> Just for fun, probably the last thing on my list would be a speaker. I have a Bluetooth speaker, it doesn't have to be a Bluetooth speaker, but the other thing that we use a lot in our homeschool is a way to listen to music or audiobooks. It sets the atmosphere. So I highly recommend that whatever place in your home that you do a lot of schooling in has speaker access somehow from a stereo or something. Um, so this speaker that I happen to have is a nine boost speaker. It's actually my husband's, but we've kind of robbed it from him. I think it was a Christmas present I bought him one year and we use it all the time, me and the kids. So anyway, that is sort of just my homeschool essentials that I wanted to show you. It's the stuff that I have for my home that we use every day. It's held tried and true. It's not like the latest thing that we bought that we kind of like right now, but won't like in a year. This is stuff that we like and we will keep using again and again. Thanks for watching this homeschooling video and I hope you have a great week. I have one more thing to show you guys. Comment below if you stayed around to listen to my last thing. Nut mixes. This one's like apricot and almonds. This one's just like a bar mix with pretzels and peanuts and all kinds of things. You guys, I buy this stuff because this is the best stuff to have on the table when you're doing workbook stuff or math. I know snacks are so hard sometimes when our kids are always asking for snacks. It's, it's classic. My kids will be playing and I'll say, let's do a little bit of school right now. And they won't come to the table. They'll go to the kitchen. And I'm like, did I say snack time? I did not say snack time. It's school's in session. Come on. <laughs> we got to do some book work. And I find that these mixed nut stuff, they're just like the best. I have them all the time. Actually, apricots and almonds. I crave these ever since I read Julie Bogart's book, The Brave Writer, because, or sorry, The Brave Learner, because she mentioned apricots and almonds as a favorite homeschool snack of theirs. And now we buy this all the time. I crave it during our school hours. So have some easy accessible snacks that you don't have to go to the kitchen and like cut up and prepare something that's easy to grab and throw on the table too. So your kids can run to the table instead of the kitchen. Bye. Um, I only buy like one, one, um, is this a ream? I'll start that again. I only buy one package at a time. What? I see, I don't see, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm looking. Okay.